Hello my dear students welcome to my channel in this video i will discuss memoirs of a chota sahib by john rontri as the lesson is too long i discussed the first part of the lesson in one of my previous videos the link is given below on my description box you can go through that link so that you can relate to this part of the lesson The Kamrup district of which Gohati was the headquarters extended to both banks of the river. The north bank had a character all its own, a vast remote stretch of flat aisles land between the sandbanks of the Brahmaputra and the Himalayan foothills. It was a strange place where the rivers dried up in the hot weather or suddenly disappeared underground sometimes in camp we had to dig for water which was so dirty that it had to be cleaned by dropping alum into the bucket to precipitate the mud here he says about gohati and the mainly about the north bank of the river brahmaputra He says that Gohati was the headquarter of Kamrup district and it was extended to both banks of the river north and south at first he will say about the north bank of the river brahmaputra he says that north bank of the river brahmaputra had a unique characteristic the land was vast and It was between the sandbanks of the Brahmaputra and the Himalayan foothills but in north bank he faced many problems because during the hot weather the river suddenly dried up and disappeared underground even they have to dig for water and that water was so dirty that they had to clean that water by dropping alum alum is a kind of chemical that helps to clean water there were numerous fields replete with wild fowl pea fowl strutted through the grass and in the manas sanctuary bordering the himalayan state of bhutan where a few rhino The rivers were full of mahir and their banks a favorite site for the governor's christmas camps which it was my task to build and for which i sometimes received a polite letter of thanks from the great man then he says about the various kinds of animal birds of north bank he says that there were numerous fields in assamis it's called bil and where he saw different kinds of birds like wild fowl pea fowl these are the kind of birds and the manas sanctuary where he saw a few rhino manas national park which is famous for one horn rhino The rivers were full of mahir mahir a kind of fish and the banks and the river banks were favorite site for governors christmas camps and the author's duty was to build that go, uh, christmas camps and because of fulfilling this duty he sometimes received grateful letters from those governors This was the home of Assam Chittal and it was here that I once witnessed the delightful sight of a she sloth bear carrying her cuddlesome cub on her back then he says about deer and a bear the bear was carrying her baby on her back and then he says right in the middle of the wilds a european and his wife had leased a piece of land from the forest department with a view of growing simul trees from the for the nearby max factory they had rigged up miles of electric fencing in an attempt to keep out the deer 
but with little success. As far as the deer were concerned, they just jumped over it. On the other hand, never having met an electric fence before, he received full treatment. I am afraid their enterprise was in no sense a very profitable one. Then he says about the uh, European and uh, his wife who bought a piece of land from the forest department to grow simul trees for the nearby maps factory. And they used electric fencing to keep out the deer out from that place. But that was not a successful business because as the author says us, that the deer jumped over those electric fencing. During the cold weather, the north bank was delightful. In the rainy season, it was a hot bed of malaria and was best avoided. Travel at this time of year could also pose problems. The rivers were in flood and the bamboo bridges erected at the start of the cold weather were soon washed away. He says that though during the hot weather he faced many problems but during the cold weather the north bank was delightful, charming. But he also says that during the rainy season, the travelers should avoid traveling to this place because it becomes a hotbed of malaria. Hotbed means an environment where something unwelcome, which we don't want, grows. Here, during the cold weather, malaria a disease comes to this place. The rivers were in flood during the rainy season. The rivers were in flood and bamboo bridges were erected. Erected means built. Bamboo bridges were built at the start of the cold weather but that was soon washed away by that flood. Though these bridges were extremely useful and strong but it creaked alarmingly under passing a car. Creaked means make a sound. Under passing a car, it made, uh, it creaked means the bridges started creaking. Once I forded one of these flooded rivers on horseback. With difficulty, I persuaded my mount to plunge into the water, then slipped over his crop and hung on to his tail, which I was able to use as a rudder. When I pushed it to the right, the horse feared to the left and vice versa. And we eventually made a safe landing on the other side of the river. Here he gives an account of his experience during the rainy season. For once he decided to cross these flooded rivers on horseback. But suddenly he slipped from the horse back and hang on to the tail of that horse as he and that he was using the tail as a rudder. As he was hanging on the tail of the horse when he feared the horse to the left direction it goes to the right and when he pushed the horse to the right direction it goes to the left. But somehow they made a safe landing on the other side of the river. Then he says, more usually crossings were made in a marboat, a tedious performance at the best of times. The mar, which was a ferry, consisted of a plank platform covering two open boats placed alongside one another. These were either pedaled across the river or connected by a running cable to another stretch across the river, were propelled from one side to the other by the force of the current. 
Here he mentions that though he decided to cross the river on horseback but more usually during the time crossings were made in a marboat. Marboat. What is a marboat? Marboat is a kind of ferry where two open boats were placed alongside one another with a plank platform. And these marboats were either paddled across the river or they were propelled from, propelled means drive from one side to the other side by the force of the current. This ingenious device worked very well, but cons constant adjustments had to be made to allow for the rise and fall of the rivers. A whole series of ghats or landing places had to be constructed at different levels on the river bank. This device, these marbles were very, worked very well during that time on the flooded rivers. But some adjustments had to be done. Fortunately, traffic was light and although crossing took time, there were few delays. Sometimes crossing took times, but there were few delays. The other difficulty about travel anywhere in Assam during the rains was the fact that the dirt tracks soon became unusable by normal cars and the zip had yet to be invented. The other one difficulty about traveling during the rainy season in Assam was that the dirt tracks soon become unusable by normal cars and jeep had yet to be invented. Once when touring with my family on the north bank we left our return rather late or rather the monsoon broke rather early and although the roads were still motorable driving became distinctly dicey most of the main roads were built on top of embankments to raise them well above the normal flood level and they were narrow single track affairs the road we were on became increasingly greasy and one skid led to another and finally we slithered over the edge into a paddy field some six feet below the road. Here he mentions another difficulty that he faced during the uh, in North Bank during the rainy season. Uh, he gave his experience when he was touring with his family on the North Bank. He says that most of the main roads were built on top of the embankments and they were narrow, single track affairs and the roads were greasy and they, and they slithered over the edge into a paddy field, six feet below the road. Paddy fields are divided into small enclosures by low banks in order to prevent the flood water running away. And we had one of the most bumpy rides of my experience before finding a way back onto the road. At the start of our travels, before the rains broke, the roads had been so dry that the surface was almost invisible under a cloud of dust. Here, the author says about the problem facing because of the dust. Driving was difficult and one's destination uncertain. Because of the cloud of dust, the driving becomes difficult and one's destination is uncertain. At one place, road work had been in progress and one of the favorite hazards of road works, a ramp, lay concealed from sight under the dust cloud. And he says that at one place, road work is going in progress but the favorite um, but the problem was that the ramp lay concealed from sight under the dust cloud ramp means a surface connecting higher and lo lower level of the roads but that was concealed that was hidden under the cloud of dust 
even no warning signs were used there and or if they were used they were not visible warning warning signs were not visible or they were not used nor was this one of the pioneer ramps usually encountered in civilized countries but a step about 6 feet in size needless to say the impact when we hit it was considerable as the car was carrying my wife myself the baby and her aya our servants and the usual mass of camp equipment as the warning signs were not used and the ramp lay concealed uh, where the, and the ramps were hidden under the cloud of dust they hit it they hit it and the car was and their car hit that ramp and their car was carrying his wife and he himself and their baby and the aya and their servants and those usual mass of camp equipments it says that mass for the motor engineers of those days that and not a single spring was broken on either of these occasions probably the fact that we were packed like sardines in the car saved our bones though they hit that ramp and uh, their car was carrying his wife his himself his servants his baby and uh, and uh, aya but no one get any problems during that hit because they were packed like sardines in the car which saved their bones this much for today the second part i will discuss in my next video in the second part i will discuss the south bank of the river brahmaputra but you the students should try to write the about the north bank of the river brahmaputra the question is what character of the north bank of the brahmaputra does the author refer to you should try to write this question and you can send it to me and if if you face any problem comment english te dilu karon exam te te question ahibo tetia iar pora likhibo pariba aru jodi tumaluke bisara je moy ahomia dibo lage tetia hole muk comment kori janaba moy next ta koi tu ahomia explanation di dibo try korim Thank you.